for a society that is expected to be free from violent African crimes. The rule of law is also the basis for us to understand that diversity in ethnic and religious actually backgrounds is a strength in itself and therefore the rule of law simply provides a guide for us to nurture that diversity in us and then to build on that diversity in us and still unite on common issues that we can actually see as a threat. Take for instance, does poverty know the difference between the face of a Christian and a Muslim? No. no. Does actually unemployment know the difference between the face of a Muslim and a Christian? And does corruption and its impact on both the economy, our standard of living, our quality of life, and its impact on governance? Does it have actually any actually compass of saying that, oh, I want to depart negatively by corrupt enrichment only those with the faces that are Christians or only those with the faces that are actually Muslims? How can corruption identify a particular group of persons based on their ethnicity or based on this background? When corrupt enrichment is impacted negatively on the economy by children inflation, by actually making actually unemployment rate to be worsened, by also making income inequality to be widened, corrupt enrichment does not actually do difference on the face of the people that is going to actually impact on negatively based on their ethnic differences or based on their religious differences. That's not actually that compass. So it is impacting, it is impacting negatively on all of us without distinction as to ethnicity, without difference as to religion. And this is the reality of ground. And that is why my second article, my first article reason as to why ethnicity or religion per se has never been in any human civilization and is not a source of conflict on its own unless it is associated with other actual factors such as elite actual selfishness for access to power and access to resources or extremism or fanaticism associated with religion and the lack of the culture of tolerance or lack of the culture of for dying. Because when you have actually ethnic differences or you have religious differences, and in a human society you can't actually run away from conflict. But when conflict erupts or when the dispute actually arises, there must be mechanisms on ground to manage them, to prevent the preventable ones and also to resolve the ones that not be prevented so that it can be resolved. There must be mechanisms in place. So it's not actually true that simply because we are promoting a culture of dialogue and tolerance that there should be no conflict. Conflict in human society is inevitable. But there must be mechanism for respect, for management, for prevention, and for ultimate resolution. That is what is important. In every political organized society, there are these actually uh, differences. But then, the difference between us as developing countries and the so called political mature democracies is that they always try to put mechanisms on ground to prevent, to control, to manage, and also to ensure that people themselves take their own destiny into their own hands by respecting the rule of law. And you can see very clearly from section 14 of the Constitution, section 15 of the Constitution, and section 20 of the Constitution, as well as actually, you know, at the board of chapter 2 of the Constitution, that actually chapter 2 of the Constitution, with this specific motion I provided, you know, give us actually the legal background and the role of the rule of law in trying to manage our ethnic and real diversity in Nigeria by ensuring that we all respect constitutional ideals and respect, you know, the law. You know, even where conflicts are erupted, that we cannot take the law into our own hands, you know, we must respect mechanisms, and when we put mechanisms on ground, we must allow those mechanisms to work. Because part of our purpose in Nigeria is that you put mechanisms to prevent, manage, and resolve conflicts, we don't allow those mechanisms actually to work as we actually uh, wish them to. My second actually uh, reason to support the argument I advanced earlier is that researches and studies in Nigeria alone in the last actually 25 years have shown that ethnicity has never been a source of conflict because people from different ethnic backgrounds have learned to live together, have learned to promote mutual respect 
for each other, and have also learned to interact on socioeconomic and political basis to shape their destiny. And the question I've always asked myself is that why is that each time that we have actually political elites in power, we've actually had triple or quadruple violent conflicts migrating to this? Why is it always so? And I've also actually made the argument that let actually anybody give us any scientific evidence to prove that ethnicity in itself or religion actually on uh, its own is a source of conflict in any mass society without the element actually the negative intolerance manipulation of precisiveness. That's not. And there's no human actual society with that kind of scientific evidence. And so my actually you know, argument is that research has also shown that uh, among the major factors, you know, that actually heighten ethnic conflicts, especially the violent ones, are uh, historical or past socio-economic or political injustices, imbalances, and inequities in society. Because all the conflicts that are ethno-religious or political conflicts by having ethnic and religious connotation are all driven by what I term identity-based conflicts in Nigeria. Identity-based conflicts are largely rooted in the fact that, first, rooted in the psychology of the people, second, rooted in the culture of the people, also rooted in the social values of the people and in the religious values of the people. And so, when you play with people's religiosity, when you do not show respect for people's actually desire, wishes, aspirations, and hopes, or when you allow or promote any actually political, economic, or social action program that tilts or promotes an imbalance or a sense of inequity or a feeling of marginalization or disadvantage, then you are going to be violent conflict. And so people always see from past historical imbalances in terms of political, socioeconomic imbalances or past historical injustices, i.e. deep-seated and long-term marginalization of people by another ethnic group, or the undue dominance of one ethnic group or one religious group over the other over a long period of time without seeing and respecting the sensitivity of the others, that there is a need for those persons to also be actually respected in the fact that they could also hold and maintain same and similar political and economic positions. Now, the feeling always in identity-based conflicts that we have in Plato, Petuna, and Bauti State will be recurrent violence, you know, since the 80s, since the 1980s, is that we have not actually made any effort to address the factors responsible for the imbalances, the factors responsible for the inequities and the factors responsible for the feeling by one ethnic or just group against the other of imbalance. And these are the realities of ground. And these are the factors that really trigger violent conflicts by hiding under the problem of ethnicity and religion, with or without any manipulation. My third reason, Mr. Chairman, that I've actually provided in this paper is that, generally speaking, uh, that I've always argued that you will always find a basis to celebrate ethnicity because in the Nigerian context, uh, there has always been the belief that some degree of ethnicity, you know, always, you know, has existed among the 240 or some say 450 ethnic linguistic, you know, uh, groups in Nigeria. And uh, it is not true that ethnic difference and any difference alone without more to it would always be a basis of recurrent violent conflicts. Let me give you an example of the big and the crisis. The Ife and the Malachi people are all in the past. They are from the same ethnic group. But the big and the crisis was one of the most violent and recurrent violent conflicts in Nigeria. And yet, the two groups the two subgroups were all from the same major ethnic group in Nigeria. But you ask the question, if there are 
produzir 